What's up StarCraft fans, when I released the reaction video to the tier list, I kind of expected the number one comment there to be, um, where is your own tier list? And today I'm here to answer that question. Um, the short answer is, it's not going to be coming anytime soon. For the longer answer, um, you, can, you may want to watch the rest of the video. And also, uh, near the end, I will show you guys kind of an example for maybe how to rank the commanders kind of fairly because that is one of my, my concerns, one of my main concerns against releasing such a tier list of my own. Anyway, so I counted five main reasons why I can't really release a tier list of my own right now. The first and probably the biggest reason is because I haven't played enough games of all prestigious. If you think about it, the prestigious were released about I, I'd say about 209 days ago, I counted, I counted, and I'm not sure if my Excel is correct and based on when this video releases, but as of recording, it's about 209 days ago. So if you do the math, there are 72 different prestiges, and of course I'm counting the initial ones because uh, some of those changed between, uh, between uh, the previous patch. So yeah, if you do the math, it's 208. Uh, 208 days, divide that across 72 prestiges, it's like less than 3 days or something? Yeah, less than 3 days to master each prestige. And you have to consider that for a lot of those days, I'm usually at work. And when I get home, I'll have a few hours left to record my videos, my normal videos that is. And then I also had this, I also want to stream on weekends. So, you know, I have uh, somewhere to go. Uh, that's, uh, that's, you know, something else from YouTube. So, yeah, all things considered, I don't really have the time at all to really uh, try out different prestiges. Since, um, if you guys didn't know, I'm still actually in the middle of uh, completing my prestiges. Of course, I already have everything on the North American server. However, I still have not done the European server to help with Loco. I have not done the Asia server to do the first mutation video when it goes live and uh, I also have not yet done my Southeast Asian account which is I think my very first StarCraft 2 account uh, that I've had since Wings of Liberty so yeah I have actually four servers to love to level up commanders on NA which is done Europe which is, which is where I do them with Loco uh, Asia which is where I do them on the first time they go live and the Southeast Asia my first server so yeah all things considered, I don't really have the time. So that results in... Just, well, check this out, guys. Check this out. So I'm gonna switch to the screen. Hold on. There we go. Just look at all these prestigious. Look at all these. Among all these, the ones the ones I've really played a lot are this one, Evolution Master. I've played a bit of Tunneling Horror. I've played a lot of Shadow of Death. I've played Highlander the Tal Dream a bit. And then for Arcturus, I played Emperor of the Dominion, Toxic Tyrant, Merchant of Death. And then for Tannis, I played a lot of uh, Valorous Inspirator. A bit of Archer Commandant. Mostly I've used this for uh, for power leveling. And uh, for Dahaka, I've done... The most I've done for Dahaka is honestly Primal Pack Leader. I've seen Pikai do a lot of devouring ones, and he's pretty good at it. And I've seen a lot of comments saying that Prime Contender Dahaka is the best because of how strong the primal, uh, the primal pack leaders get. And I actually believe them, it's just that I haven't really gotten to play Primal Contender a lot because I like having multiple, uh, multiple, ultimate, multiple pack leaders out. For Phoenix, I've done a lot of Nether Administrator and I do believe that it's one of the best. Um, yeah, one of the best, not the best of the best, but one of the best, like it's elite, it's up there. For Han and Horner, I played this first two. The first two I played a lot. Third one I played a little bit. For Wing Commanders, I, have, I honestly haven't played a lot of it. So whatever opinion that might come out of my mouth about Wing Commanders, probably don't take it as the word of someone who has who has played it a lot. So yeah, I wouldn't really trust myself to give a fair rating of Wing Commanders because I have yeah, just, just, just an example, right? So for Karax, I actually think that Ever since the Prestigious released, Kalai Phase Myth is my least played one, which is interesting. For Kerrigan, I haven't played a lot of Malevolent Matriarch, I think for a good reason. 
Um, yeah, I think for a good reason. The most I played is Folly of Man, but not really, not really Queen of Blades or Desolate Queen that much ever since Folly of Man released. It's just so good. For Nova, I haven't played the second one a lot. Rainer, I haven't played the second one and the first one a lot. Stat Boy, I haven't played anything besides P2 because it's so good. It's just so good. For for Stukov, I haven't played P1 and P2. Don't get me wrong, P1 is pretty good. It's really good for leveling. It's just I haven't played it a lot because whenever I use Stukov, it's for a mutation. And uh, yeah, when a mutation comes around, it's just the point of play Stukov mutations is infested. So you either use P1, P0 or P3. And uh, well, I might change that when the that comes around, but we'll see. Anyway, for Swan, I think with the number of procedures that came out, I think I might have stopped playing Swan altogether. I've no, I know I've done a solo with P2, but that was just it. Um, I'm trying to get to play more P1. I've seen the damage output in the laser drill, and I've compared the numbers. It actually does more damage, even without the top bars, just with a splash. But yeah. I haven't played enough to really conclusively say that that is indeed the case. For Tychus, I mostly be playing the second one, third one, and the first one I avoid kind of because the second one is just so good, it's just so strong and so easy to use. Uh, Vorizun, I've used the third one. Guys, again, remember, uh, I have an idea for how to do a revisited of the third prestige of Vorizun. If you want to if you want if you, if you want to make me do that for next week's prestige revisited, please vote that. And uh, yeah, I haven't played the first or the second of Warriors. I'll see I'm not impressed by it. Because they give up a lot by these prestigious. Next, Zagara. I haven't played uh, the second one a lot. I've used the second one for leveling Zagara. But uh, once she's leveled, I either find myself using P1 or P3. And it's not because one of them are strong, or one of them are stronger than the others, or one of them are weaker than the others, or one of them is weaker than the others. It's just that, you know. There are so many choices that it's easy to kind of neglect a bunch of these. And yeah, that's basically it. Zeratul, I've not used P1 to be honest. Not a lot. I should use it more, but I haven't used it a lot. Second one, I've used it. Third one, I've used it not, but not as much as I want to before I can come to a reasonable conclusion as to where that place is among all of these. It's just... Oh, that's... I think that ties right to my second reason, guys. The second reason why I can't really... there I gave 5, right? Yeah, I said 5. The first one is that I haven't played enough games of all prestigious. The second one is maybe there are just too many prestigious. Again, 72, count them. 18 commanders and 4, 4 types of each. The three, prestigi 3 prestigious and the first one. That's 4 of them. That's 72 in total. And yeah, it's so many. And I kind of feel like it's bordering on just having too many commanders to all, or too many prestigious to just all rank fairly. It's just, yeah, it's just a fact that there's just so many. Imagine trying to make a ranking of 72 things and getting, getting them correctly. That's, now that's hard enough, that's hard enough to do on its own, but you also have to consider that there's not one thing you have to consider when making a tier list. That ties into my third reason for not releasing a tier list. The third is, there are too many things to consider when making a tier list. Later on, I will show you guys an example of a way to rate these commanders across different criteria such as, for example, maximum strength, ramp up speed, uh, uh, speed running time, synergy with commanders, ease of use, and resilience to different mutators, but yeah, there are a lot of things to consider, and, consi and uh, consider that when you rank each of these, uh, for each one, you have to consider which criterion is more important. Is it new friendliness? Is it maximum power? Is it resilience to mutators? There are so many things to consider, on top of how many commanders there are. It's just, if you really think about it, the responsible thing is to not release a prestige tier list because it's so easy to make a mistake with 72 of these and so many things to consider it's just oh so difficult and uh if i do release one it'll probably lead into my fourth reason for not releasing a tier list video which is because tier lists like these naturally attract negative feedback 
I'm not saying the views. The views are great. They're they're uh, raking in the views, but in terms of the actual the actual uh, uh, reaction to those to those uh, tier lists, it's kind of uh, yeah, it's kind of a different story. So here's here are the comments on the on the uh, prestige tier list reaction video that I made. Just just count them. So this one is fine. This one is neutral. This one is neutral. This was a question, so it's neutral. But this one, so this was a negative comment. Um, not necessarily, not necessarily a, a bashing comment or a. Uh, it's just negative in tone because yeah, you should play more, which clearly says that I don't play him enough, which is true. I'm not saying he's. I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm just saying it's so, it's so uh, naturally attracting of negative comments because when you make when you look at tier lists like these. It's more, e it's a lot easier to notice the things that someone gets wrong than what they get right. But think about it, 72 things. What would stand out more, the 71 that you placed correctly or the one that you placed incorrectly? It's pretty easy. And just look at the comments. Look, this one's negative because again, negative in this context is pointing out something that should be done instead of what I did do. So there it is, negative comment. I love someone, this is neutral, this is neutral. If you play Scourge Queen, yeah, this is, this is definitely a disagreement, so it's a negative. I actually love this comment. See, I actually love this comment. Uh, it, it goes against what I say about attracting negative comments, but a neg attract negative feedback, but this one goes against the grain. Actually, yeah, this guy's, yeah. I, I really get comments like these, so. Yeah, I, I'll yeah, I'll give it a heart. Sure, I'll, I'll give I'll give it an upload upload as well. Yeah, he deserved it. He he goes against my point, but I, I like I like how he did that. Anyway, wait, where's P three character? I guess that's new. That, that was a question. P why people hate P one character? A disagreement. Negative comment. Misunderstand P two Rainer. Negative comment. He's not wrong, but it's still negative comment because the the, the kind of content this is the tier list. I feel like people have a natural tendency to look for what people did wrong than what they did right. So, um, I'm not saying he's wrong, he's just uh, providing negative feedback. So that's why it's negative, so 4 to 1. Zero tool must be double S anyway, that's definitely a disagreement. Uh, 5 negative comments. To, uh, to Arax and SS looks like yeah, someone made this, so... Yeah, definitely a disagree, but they're definitely negatively oriented. 6 to 1. Next comment. P3 Kerrigan's underestimated again. So, 7, 7 disagreements, 7 negative comments. Okay, this one's neutral, he just gave his own tier list, which is fine. Uh, calling someone a random was the best insults. I didn't mean to insult him, I just said it's a random guy. That's it, not, it's not meant to be an insult. It's the old list. Um, I'll call that neutral. I agree with Scourge Queen as SS tier. First off, you're wrong. Second off, another negative criticism. So, eight to one. Are you getting? Are you getting the? Uh, are you getting the? Uh, the pattern here, guys. The moment I saw set my P2 best buddy in only eight tier, when there's double S tier, makes this tier makes his tiers lost all credibility. I know it's not my tier list, but the kind of thing he chose to say is still a disagreement to someone. So, it's still a negative comment. That's 9 disagreements and 1 positive. People seem to like tier lists. They do. They do. I cut, sure, I'd count as a positive one. Sure. I'd count that as a positive one. I'd, here, I'll, I'll give you a, a vote. As someone who sucks at micro... I'll, I'll say that's neutral. I, I'll say that's neutral. He was just giving his point of view. It's not necessarily positive or negative. He's just stating his point of view without necessarily calling something out that I did wrong or that I did right, so that's neutral. Start from scratch, there was a question, that's neutral. I think you might be misinterpreting, definitely negative, so that's 11, 11 disagreements. So, uh, play to, to the ones I like to play, again, he's calling out something that he disagrees with, so that's 12, 12 negative and 2 positive. Most of the lifetime I play around, negative 13, collectively all are wrong. I, I agree with him. I agree with him, but that doesn't change the fact that it's a negative comment. So that's 14. 14. Do you get what I'm saying, guys? Do you get what I'm saying? It's just, it's just so, so naturally good at attracting negative attention. 
that I don't think I don't think that's the kind of uh, the kind of uh, uh, thing I want to have in my in my comment section that people arguing, and uh, I think discussion is fine, discussion is fine, as long as there is actual conversation happening. If you if you talk about the differences and if you can somehow find a common point and uh, something you both can agree on, then that's a productive discussion. But here comes my final reason for not releasing my own tier list. My tier list would be probably largely pointless anyway. Judging from the kind of comments that I got from my that I got from my uh, from my video, it seems that most people already have a preconceived notion of where the commanders are generally. So what purpose really would a tier list of mine have? It would just kind of uh, be putting myself out there for people to say, ah, oh, he got this wrong, ah, oh, he got that wrong, oh, that's not right, oh, he's an idiot. Basically, it's not really gonna tell anyone that, oh, he said this guy's S tier. I think maybe I should play more. I don't think people react that way. More often than not, they see something like, why is this guy S tier? He should be he should be B tier. Oh, why is, why is this guy C tier? He should be a double S tier. Like, that's how people react. And like, if I were to make a point, uh, if I were to make a, a, a tier list in the hopes of convincing someone that commander should be at this level and uh, with the kind of research that, I, the kind of research that I plan to do for it, it's not going to work because most people will say that, no, this is wrong. This guy's an idiot, which is not an unfair, not an unfair assumption. It's just, it's just a fact of life. But that doesn't change the fact that the point of the tier list, my point of making a tier list of trying to tell people where the commanders stand, is kind of, uh, kind of missed. Because what would happen is that people would just point out where I went wrong, just point them out. And it'll be like a stupid, a stupidly, uh, a stupidly one-sided thing where, like, as you, as, as I showed here, like, right? Something like 14, 15 negative comments to like two positive ones, and a lot of questions. Let's be fair, a lot of questions. But yeah, <laughs> it's it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty lopsided. But I know that's gonna, I know that's not gonna stop you people from asking me, from insisting on insisting that I make a tier list. And yeah, people have requested a lot and I just want to call it someone he literally said this guy this guy the one at the bottom this guy literally said wait this is not the bottom one let me find this let me find this one comment this guy said nobody cares about yours this is not only condescending it's just straight up untrue because people literally ask me to make a tier list and then not only that, he also, you know, goes the hip hypocritic route by giving his own opinion. Like, what is your comment for, my dude? <laughs> anyway, um, moving on. I did say that I, w I was going to give my own measure for how to make a tier list. Uh, yeah, I did make something on the, on the spreadsheet. So first, here is how I would score people. So... I, as I mentioned before, uh, there are there are going to be many different criteria for how to rate commanders. So here is one. I'm not saying this is the definitive correct way, but this is one of the ways that we'll consider various options. Now, how much each of these weigh is totally up to you. I can maybe upload this to a Google Sheet and it'll be up to you guys to download it, like place scores in these and It'll update the scores. It'll update the score totals at the top. At the top, so yeah, just a perfect score would be this column, and then just rate each commander out of a perfect score of one. For example, uh, skill ceiling. So yeah, just yeah, just score them here. If you think uh, if you think they're good at it, give them the maximum score. If you don't think they're good at, it, give them nothing, and or anything in between. Just kind of you can give like 0 0.5, 1, 0 0.6, 0 0.9, or something like that, just to uh, give them. The, the bit of ranking that uh, that will be needed to make a tier list. But yeah, so in this tier list in particular, I have a perfect score of 100 across across all criteria. But so that 100 is composed of, for example, 
skill ceiling, which is solo speedrunning, which is the ultimate test of the commander's limits, meaning how fast can this commander clear the map when you use all his skill, all his tool sets. So yeah, it has a total of 15. So there are 15 maps and yeah, total of 15. So for example, if Artinus has like, yeah, if this Artinus scores like this, he'll have six points basically. And uh, yeah, that's how this this criteria works or criterion works out of 15. The next one, 19 points general power. I just gave points on whether they're good at dealing with these item compositions or not. Just rate them out of 10, or rate them out of one, like give decimal points, um, give, give fractions. And uh, yeah, if, if, you, if you think, for example, our Titans is one of the best at dealing with Home of the Kala, I give him the full one perfect score. But if you think he's pretty garbage at dealing with classic infantry, well alert, no one is garbage at dealing with classic infantry. They give him a zero if he if he is garbage when he's not. Uh, yeah. So other criteria, uh, other criteria that I've given a uh, full power, which is maxed out DPS, meaning at full, at full, fully upgraded and fully maxed out army. How much damage does your commander deal? It can be a bit tricky with splash damage, anti air, anti ground, that sort of consideration. But just I made it a, a twelve, a twelve score, so you guys can like freely give any graded score. Like I think our time is like. Uh, a six, Cigar is like eight, Horus is like a nine, S Swan's like a ten, something like that. Ray or Kerrigan, you could be like a nine as well, something like that. I'm not sure. I'm not saying these are my score, but these are, yeah, how you could possibly score them, considering different criteria. Next is ramp up speed, how fast they can get to an army that can start steamrolling the map. For example, Abathur only needs like three ultimate, even one ultimate evolution to get going, and he can get as early as two minutes. So yeah, ramp up speed can be very hard for, for Abathur, uh, unless you go for that uh, one P1 Essence Hoarder Prestige, where you don't have ultimate evolution. So it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna change uh, here. Next is synergy with the commanders. You can consider like how well the prestigious, and even uh, even without prestige, how well these guys complement the. For example, stat zones, um, repair beams, garden shells, creep heal. Etc. Just, yeah, just you can rate them out of 12 based on how well they synergize. And you can also, uh, there's, this, there's another category, new friendly. How well can a new guy pick up this commander and do well? For example, Artanis is pretty high up here. I, 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 I give a perfect 10. Or I can give Artanis a perfect 10 because you don't, you don't actually need to play Artanis to give Garden Shell. So that's already a 10. But yeah, that, something, something like that. You can score it like that. And then another consideration here would be resilience. That would be basically how well they deal with mutators. So I've divided the mutators into four. So you can have like enemy spawn type mutators, like void rifts here from the storm, void reanimators, outbreak missile command, those kind of enemy enemy spawning mutators. And then the next uh, kind of mutator would be any buffs which will be, will be uh, mutators that make the enemy stronger, the existing enemy stronger, like transmutation. Avenger, Just Die, Speed Freaks, We Move Unseen, that, that kind of stuff. Then another kind of mutator would be en environmental hazards like Go Nuclear, Blizzard, Purifier Beam, Lava Burst, Twister. And then another one would be player debuffs like Microtransactions, Sharing is Caring, Slim Pickings, Polarity, Vertigo, that, that kind of stuff. But yeah, basically, you, this, kind of, this, kind of, uh, this kind of metric is quite tedious, remember? There are gonna be 72 of these prestiges. I only have 18 commanders, just to just to show a proof of concept, but there are gonna be 72 commanders here. And out of the 72, you have to consider each of these and rate each commander how well they score each of these. Only to arrive at a measure of how well they score on this particular listing. Because while it might look fair, while it might look very fair at first glance. Consider this, the skill ceiling is, on, is only given a, 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 an allotment of 15 points, whereas, remember, this is the maximum potential of the commander, whereas the general power is given 19. So, this might not be fair to random player, to, play, to people who play on the solo queue who don't really look to speedrun. If, if, uh, if your intention of playing co-op is to just have fun playing the solo queue, Maybe you should give Noob Friendly a higher rating. 
since that's really uh, what you play co-op for. But if you're a speedrunner, if you want to maximize, if you want to be the best of the best, you might want to up this like 30 points, just because you consider uh, solo speedruns to be more important. And yeah, like, these values can change depending on which ones or which criteria you really value uh, from the rest, which is why, uh, again, there are too many prestigious, there are too many considerations, and it's hard to really get people to agree on what these values should be before you start creating the commanders, even. But I, I, I'm hoping you guys can at least get a sense of the scale of work needed to really get a fair-ish rank of the because once, once again, these these uh, these numbers here, these criteria are completely arbitrary. And what's a twelve? What's a twelve point to me might be a twenty point to someone, or a six point to someone else, depending on what they consider when ranking commanders. And uh, speaking of the tiers, so I kind of dislike having a, a double S tier because having a double S tier kind of makes it pointless to have an S tier in the first place because the S the S is meant to be a special tier, a star or a super A tier. Where only the best of the best live, or the, the best of the best can be ranked in. So, uh, I revamped the uh, I have revamped the actual tiers so that it will resemble more of a uh, a bell curve, such that the commanders or the prestigious are more inclined to be in the average rather than in the best. One of the criticisms I had in the original tier list is that remember they're like. How many commanders need? How many prestigious double S2? Eight? Eight prestigious of is too many. It should be only reserved for the best of the best, which is why I only put the top five commanders on that S tier. I'm not I'm throwing out the double the double S because I, can, I feel like it's kind of pointless. Just have an S tier, just have that be the best, not have anyone else be above that. A tier is elite, like they're really good, they're they're some of the best, but they're not quite at the peak of the mountain. They're really good, the best, but not the best. Not the not the peak. The, like, yeah, look look at this. I'm reserving the top five commanders for S rank, and then the top eight. So like the top thirteen would be elite, but the top five among that type of that top thirteen would be S rank. And so we move on. B is reliable. So in the in the previous ranking, B was made out to be some kind of uh, bad place like Oh, B is too low. That's too. No, I don't think that's. I don't think that's the case. B is still pretty good, I would say. Yeah, I would put twelve there, and then I would. I'm loading. I'm really loading the average rank. I I put twenty four commanders there. Or I put twenty four prestigious there, just to really make it, you know, average. Just you don't really stand as too too strong or too weak. Just middle, like middling, and then goes down. Usable D, kind of. Not, not up to par with the rest, but still usable. And then E salvageable, they're pretty bad, but if you play well, you can still, you know, use them and win. But and and, and then F, just avoid them altogether. That's, this is how I would rank them. So if I were to make a tier list, it'd probably take me a long, long time because the criteria are uh, are many, and so are the number of commanders. But when I do. If I do make a tier list, it'll most likely be, it'll most likely look like this. Like only the very best commanders would be, uh, would be at this S tier, the best, and then just have a bell curve where prestigious uh, tend to be at C. And uh, yeah, if you guys want to use this, I might just uh, upload the score tally to uh, one of the Google Sheets I have and just give the link so you guys can download it or something. But yeah. That's the reason why I haven't made my own prestige tier. And if I were to make one, and if I were to recommend a way that you guys would want to make your own tier list, so how? Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. If I have an idea for what else to do, please leave that in the comment. Next week's mutation is going to be World on Fire, and the video for that will be tomorrow. See you then.